All right, Bryce. The biggest NBA draft news this week was that Trenton Flowers, a borderline four-star, kind of five-star-ish kind of guy, he was committed to Louisville, was in Louisville, was doing NIL events for fans in Louisville, was practicing with the Cardinals. And earlier this week, it gets officially announced that he is going to the Adelaide 36ers in the NBL. He is signing a after all of that. That is, uh, it was a stunner to be sure in Louisville. Uh, I think Louisville fans were a little bit surprised by all of this and rightfully so. I mean, anytime you lose, lose a four or five star, the guy that's really the most important piece of their recruiting class, you know, all due respect to Dennis Evans, like anytime you lose that guy that was supposed to be your player under Kenny Payne and you go four and 28, if I remember correctly last year, you lose that player that's supposed to be the centerpiece. It's tough. It's real tough. So I get Louisville fans frustration here in mid August, Sam. in mid August, you lost that guy. Yeah. I mean, like as somebody who has been inside like college basketball and has been a player, how, how big of a deal is that? Like, t- tell me, like, if someone left your team in mid-August, that's that's crazy. Like, that, it's impossible to replace him. Like, yeah. you can't go out and get anybody now. And it's different than whenever I played, Sam, because we didn't, we weren't able to practice whenever I played in the summer. It was just workouts with the strength coach and stuff like that. Now, even the non-foreign tour teams are able to get so many practices a week and all of that stuff. So, you know, teams and chemistry and all that stuff's a little bit more established And again, I understand guys doing what they have to do, girls and guys, you know, in this business, you have to be a little bit selfish with decisions, Sam. But if I was on that team, I I would be pissed. Like you, I still have a group message with my teammates from how many ever years ago that was 15 years ago. We talk almost daily. That's the kind of like chemistry, not every team, but it, 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 it hurts. It would really bother me as a player, especially I assume a lot of stuff was built around this kid for that Louisville offense. Yeah. So it's interesting. There, there have been reports that like he wasn't great in practice at Louisville. Um, what I was told was kind of similar ish along those lines. Um, I'm not like, I, I don't know. Like I'm not going to sit here and say I was at Louisville practices, but like, you know, like I'd heard that like Trey White was the guy at Louisville uh, throughout the process. And I like Trey White a lot. Like I think Trey White's a legit NBA prospect this year uh, if he can learn to shoot. So let's talk about this from a couple of different perspectives here. Let's talk about this first from Trenton Flowers' perspective on going to Louisville. I get why he did this. This Louisville roster is not – in any way, shape, or form conducive to his success next year. If he wants to be a one and done, there's nothing about this roster that is built around him. Their second best prospect uh, in like piece that they're building around is Dennis Evans. He's like a seven foot two center that can't do anything outside of like five feet away from the basket. He's an awesome defender. He's enormous. He's long. I've heard he's like an unbelievable kid, like incredible human being. Uh, but he can't do anything offensively outside of five feet from the rim. Let's even say maybe might even be three, to be honest. It's just that he is one of the best defenders in the 2023 recruiting class. Your two four men are JJ trainer and Brandon Huntley Hatfield. They both hit under 30% from three last year, not really floor spacers. You have Trey white who I love, but Trey white's like a great defender and is six foot seven and can move like without the ball and can handle the ball a little bit. Shot like 30% from three last year. Not really a shooter at this point. Sky Clark can theoretically be a shooter, but Sky Clark like wasn't very good in the limited minutes he got at Illinois. I hope that he is a little bit better. So if you're looking around in your Trenton Flowers, you're a player that, and maybe I'll give you the floor on this, Bryce. You can kind of break down who Trenton Flowers is because I made you watch a little bit of him. He's like this big six foot seven, six foot eight. Like I think he's more of a point forward than a lead ball handler. And we'll talk about that piece of it here momentarily. Uh, he's like the six foot seven, like point forward who loves to slash and get everything at the rim and try to make plays off of that. Like he grew up as a point guard 
but then had a growth spurt and, you know, became this guy that is a, a little bit more of a point forward. When you watched Trenton Flowers, can you, A, what did you see? And B, can you see why I think this fit may not have been the best for his specific goals this year? Yeah, I mean, I thought you could see the stuff with the ball in his hands, right? But everything was to the rim. And even, you know, I just watched some like YouTube highlight videos. I didn't like do a deep dive. Like some of these guys will talk about, you know, well, I'm hoping we'll talk it. Well, I get a choice. So we're going to talk about my guy, mm -hmm. Dylan Jones later. And I would say that I've watched more Dylan Jones film than anybody other than maybe his own coaches. But with a shot, it, it's a little weird. He gets it to a point and then it's like a super quick flick. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's okay. He's a young kid. I'm not like trying to crush it, but I'm, I didn't watch it and just go, Oh my gosh, that was fluid. This is a guy that can really space the floor and knock down shots. It, it was the stuff to the rim was interesting, Sam, but even when he explains his own game, he does say versatile, but he's like, I'm a magic Johnson type player. He said the reason he wanted to go play in the NBL was he cited uh, Josh Giddy and ball. And so like, I, I just took that no matter what I think about his game, Sam, this kid is thinking this is who he is. And one thing I know about players, it, especially a lot of them, they want to be the player they want to be. And so yeah. even if it would be more exciting maybe to be some off-ball cutting, slashing, developing, those type of things, he sounds like he wants the ball in his hand, dominate it, and run the show. And there's a diff – real quick, there's a difference, Sam, between running the show and – being like this good passer, secondary creator yeah. that can attack a closeout and then make a right read. Yeah. And by the way, Adelaide could be set up for him to be that based off of what I've been told. Okay. He's going to play point guard. Like he's playing point guard. Like that is what they're doing. Uh, but they have Mitch McCarron. Like they have a guy that has played games for the Australian national team. Awesome leader, really good defender. You know, awesome distributor, point of attack defender. For instance, people that remember the big Phoenix game where they lost in the preseason last year to the Adelaide 36ers in like the NBA, NBL crossover event thing. The reason that they lost is A, Craig Randall went nuts, but B, Mitch McCarron had like 17 assists in that game. He was unbelievable. Like Mitch McCarron has not shot well the last couple of years in the NBL, but he's like almost the perfect guy that you'd want to put next to Trent Flowers in theory. The impression I'm getting is that that's, it's going to be more that Trenton's going to get the ball and it's going to be Trenton's show. If it is, it's going to be bad. I truly think it's going to be bad. Trenton Flowers is not ready to play point guard in a professional basketball league. I'm not sure Trenton Flowers was ready to play point guard like in college, I think that you can make a case that the spacing of the floor, that the, uh, you know, the more talent around him, you know, having professional players around him that are better shooters, that might be a little bit more conducive to his game. But there's more to being a point guard than just being able to drive and attack and get to the rim and being able to handle the ball at six foot eight. He can do that. He's a really talented kid and he has real upside. Like, I don't want to crush the kid. Like there's, a lot of talent here. It's just that he's not ready to do this in a professional league. Like it, I think that his pace of play needs to improve a little bit. Like he needs to be able to change gears at a pretty real level, as opposed to everything going toward the basket. Uh, he has no real in between game in the tape that I've watched. Uh, again, the jumper I think is a very real question mark. I think the decision-making is going to be, you know, for a point guard, I think he can make decisions in a straight line when he's a secondary ball handler and he can like, you know, catch and drive or he can catch and maybe take a second ball screen. When you're responsible for initiating everything, the decision making is critical. And I don't know if he has that yet either. So we've seen kids go over to Australia and struggle in a real way. The Josh Giddies, LaMelo Balls, they're the outliers. Like these are guys that have come in and proven that not only are they, you know, good NBA players, they're probably all-stars. Like Josh Giddy is probably going to be an all-star at some point. Uh, if you look at what his statistical thresholds are that he's hit so far, Josh Giddy is that good to where, you know, he probably makes an all-star game in the NBA at some point. So I don't think that's a good idea at all. Like he needs, they need to play him with Mitch McCarron. 
uh, and play him next to a real point guard. And he can grab and go and he can attack him on the break and you can attack scramble situations. There are a lot of different ways where like you can achieve what you want to achieve yes. while not playing point guard. And I hope that he kind of goes into this understanding that. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, and he reclassified, right? Which is – That's the other piece of this. And I've, I've, again, I listened to the podcast, so I know this. And we're going to talk about this with another player that we'll talk about later in the episode. But point guards, reclassifying, he hasn't always done it even though he grew I, – I, I could see a world, Sam, where he gets very frustrated. You know what? If they don't guard him, Sam – that's going to get really frustrating for him. What if they go under every ball screen and he can't knock down shots? And then it just. Oh, and they should. They should. That's what I'm saying. You know how frustrating that's going to get for him, though? So it, it's, again, it sounds like we're crushing him. I, I think we're crushing the decision no, because we think he can be successful. Yeah, like Otherwise, I'm crushing else. I'm crushing the situation maybe more than anything. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I want him to play off the ball more. I think that he yeah. is better as a wing, I, I think. And, and I hope that he understands, like, I'm, if they want to try him for a week or so at point guard and see how it goes. Okay, sure. But I, I think where this ends is he's probably a wing and that's okay. Like, it's not the worst thing in the world for him to be a wing. Uh, very talented. Like he's six foot eight. He's very coordinated. He can handle the ball. Like he has some dribble passability at that size and the nba is looking for guys that are this big like truly he does have real nba upside like i'm not sitting here saying this guy's not an nba player i think there's a good chance that he could be down the road but again the pathway is important here and when you talk to scouts about trenton flowers and he needs to understand this as much as anybody and his family needs to understand this as much as anybody this is coming from like nba scouts they notice that he's been to four different high schools now that he went to Louisville, never played a game at Louisville. And before the summer ended, decided to leave Louisville and go to Adelaide. That's not something that teams love to see. Like they don't love to see. It's kind of a red flag for them that he's been jumping around. to all these different places and hasn't yet found a spot to be successful, like at the highest levels that he could be yet. So I hope that they understand that my concern is that based off of the interview that they gave uh, to, uh, I want to get this right here before uh, I mention it. It was the 35 KY sports. They just like kind of went on and started talking like him and his dad. And like, one thing they mentioned is like Kenny Payne. Uh, I've been trying to call him. I've tried to call him seven or eight times and he still hasn't picked up. I wouldn't like, I don't, I might pick up once if I was Kenny Payne. I don't blame Kenny Payne for not picking up. Like the, 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 the more low key that you can do this and let your play do the talking would be good for Trenton flowers at this point. He needs to kind of take a step back. I think the family needs to take a step back and go to Australia be as successful as you can be in Australia and then everything will be taken care of. Talking about this stuff publicly does nobody any favors. So I'm hoping that I'm hoping that the family like kind of understands some of the aspects of this that NBA teams are noticing already. Like and NBA teams notice this. You might think that you're just doing like an interview or whatever. You're saying this, you're saying that like, you're out here like kind of publicly crushing Kenny Payne, who has a lot of really good relationships across the NBA, right? Like literally worked for the New York Knicks. Not the best plan, just not the best plan of attack, in my opinion. I've got into this world a little bit that some NBA draft, non-media world. I, I, I won't say exactly what it is, but the more I'm around it and deal with some of this, like, Yes, everything you said is a hundred, and you know even more than me just because of who you are and what you do. And you've talked to these NIL deals, sponsorship deals, agencies, NBA teams, everybody's paying attention. And to the point with Kenny Payne, Sam, the article I read, I was reading his quote, and I was like, that was one of the better worded, like, 
I'm super pissed about this, but I'm not going to outwardly. I thought his quote was really good is my point. Yeah. Because he you, don't, you, you can't just let a kid walk over you. Like, he, we are competitors in this business. You know, players, coaches, he, do you know how many resources they spent recruiting that kid and then having him on campus money NIL deals and the resources coaching him? It wasn't easy to hear that news. And I thought he had a really quality quote in, you know, in this day and age where you have to. So I, I just wanted to point that out. I thought, you know, I really, he's a, he's a grown man. Obviously he's the head of a program. Maybe I'm giving too much credit, but I thought it was really well said his quote. I think it was the ESPN article on it. So where does this all go from here? Uh, Louisville. I think this probably makes them a little bit worse long-term. I don't know if it really like crushes them this year. I don't know what Trenton flowers would have been this year. Uh, necessarily. I think he probably would have been a pretty interesting player, but you know, I think there would have been some inefficiencies there. I think that he would have provided maybe some like defensive versatility, just being as big as he is. Cause it's hard to find six foot eight wings with real coordination and athleticism uh, for Adelaide. Uh, I hope that this ends up being a circumstance where they don't play him at point guard all year, because I don't think that will go well. Uh, and for the kid, I think this probably does, put him in a better position to be a 2024 draft pick. If that is what he wants to be, if only because I think it puts him in a better roster situation for his talents. I don't think it puts him in a better position if he's going to play point guard. And I don't think it puts him in a better position if he is going to continue to do some of the things that they seem to be doing right now. But I do think that in general, he is more likely to be a draft pick now in 2024 than he was if he was at Louisville, which maybe that ultimately achieves their goal and that's fine, but just go about it in a bit of a slightly different way. Maybe. 